Welcome to another session of water technology. Today we look into estimation of alkalinity in water. Before we move on, subscribe for more informative videos. Please drop in your comments after watching the video and if you like the video, tap the like button. At the end of the session, you will be able to explain the principle of estimation of alkalinity. You will be able to describe the procedure and also perform this experiment. You will be able to calculate the phenolphthalein and methyl orange alkalinity. You will also be able to identify the alkalinity contributing ions and determine the amount of these ions present in the given water sample. We will understand what is alkalinity of water. That is, it is a measure of the amount of hydroxide, carbonate and bicarbonate ions present in it. Apart from this, silicates, phosphates, borates also include alkalinity but which is not in major quantities. So, we generally restrict ourselves to these three ions. This neutralizes the acidity in water. It is expressed as mg per liter or ppm in terms of calcium carbonate. And the significance of this experiment is mainly to determine the capacity of a stream or a river to neutralize acid pollution. That is, acidity present in the water, it can be due to acid rain or discharge of acidic impurities from industries, etc. This is the major significance. First, we we'll let us understand what is alkalinity. We say that it neutralizes the acidity in water. That means it is basic. So, I want to pose a question, what is the difference between an alkali and a base? Please press the pause button, think over the answer, then resume the video. Base neutralizes the acid, that is we all know, uh, one which has great, a pH greater than 7 up to 14, we call it as a base and it neutralizes acid, but a base need not dissolve in water. If it dissolves in water, we call it as an alkali. So, all alkalis are bases, but not all bases are alkalis. This is the difference. So, we are discussing the basic material present in water. So, we call it as alkalinity. So, once I have said it is determination of alkalinity that is base, we can easily determine it by acid-base titration, a very simple titration. When you go for acid-base titration, the two common indicators used are phenolphthalein and methyl orange. And this is the pH range. And phenolphthalein is pink in color in the basic condition and methyl orange is yellow in color. So, if you take a certain amount of water, here I am telling YML, it can be 20 ml, 50 ml, 100 ml of your choice. If you take that water in a conical flask and add two drops of phenolphthalein, because alkalinity is present in the water, the color is going to be pink. And we titrate it against an acid, it can be sulfuric acid, nitric acid, anything. When we titrate it against an acid, the pink color becomes colorless at the end point and we note down that as PML, that is the volume of sulfuric acid. So, pink to colorless, it is becoming acid, acidic. So, this happens only up to the pH level of 8.3 when it is dropping down. But beyond that, if you have any alkaline substance, this phenolphthalein is not going to show us the endpoint. So, we need methyl orange. So, we add two drops of methyl orange to the same solution and it is going to be yellow if basic substances are present, that is alkalinity is still present and we titrate it further with the acid till it becomes reddish orange or if you go beyond, it goes to pink, it is better to stop at reddish orange and this we note down as mml of sulfuric acid. This is phenolphthalein alkalinity when you determine the burette is filled with sulfuric acid, conical flask you take water and two drops of phenolphthalein. It can be hard water because anyway if alkalinity is present also it is going to contribute for uh, hardness. And when you add two drops of phenolphthalein it is going to be pink in color. And when you titrate with the acid at the end point, it becomes colorless. This is the indication, pink to colorless. And at the end point, we did uh, note down the volume of sulfuric acid consumed as PML. And similarly, for methyl orange, in the beginning itself, we can add methyl orange. Or after determining the phenolphthalein end point, we can add methyl orange to the same so, uh, solution and continue the titration. And here, the end point is LO2 reddish orange that is if alkalinity is present it is going to be yellow and at the end point it changes to reddish orange this is the color change and we note down the 
volume of sulfuric acid consumed at this end point as m ml and we have already said ions contributing for alkalinity that the major ions are hydroxide carbonate and bicarbonate when we titrate it against an acid we are indicating acid as h plus ions hydroxide reacts with acid to form water carbonate reacts with one one mole of carbonate reacts with one mole of acid to form bicarbonate this is important here these two are indicated with phenolphthalein endpoint but we are getting bicarbonate so again it can react with acid to form carbon dioxide and water so only half of this carbonate only one part of the carbonate is indicated with phenolphthalein indicator but the bicarbonate further reacts with acid to form this which is not indicated with phenolphthalein so the carbonate which is turned to bicarbonate and as well as the bicarbonate present in your water both together will react with acid to form this with methyl orange indicator but in case you don't add phenolphthalein if you add only methyl orange all the three will get neutralized because methyl orange can go up to 4.3 you can see with the ph hydroxide when it's present is highly alkaline so its ph will be about 12 and when the ph drops down that is when you titrate against acid and when the ph drops down to 8.3 that is your phenolphthalein endpoint hydroxide and carbonate present is going to be neutralized but not the whole of the carbonate but the carbonate getting converted to bicarbonate only that part so we say that hydroxide and half of carbonate why half of carbonate because one mole of carbonate consumes two moles of acid because one to convert to bicarbonate another one to get converted to carbon dioxide and water so it is two moles of bicarbonate so phenolphthalein endpoint indicates the complete hydroxide neutralization and half of carbonate neutralization now if we further titrate it against an acid when it drops down to 4.3 pH that is your methyl orange all your hydroxide and carbonate and also bicarbonate neutralizes and below that pH we will have free mineral acids and some dissolved carbon dioxide present in the water which is not taken into consideration at the end point of methyl orange we see that all the three get neutralized so what is M minus P that is the volume of sulfuric acid beyond phenolphthalein endpoint that is M minus P indicates remaining half of carbonate and the bicarbonate neutralization. This is very important for you to understand. You need to remember this to understand the remaining portion of this presentation. Now as we have seen these are the three ions contributing for alkalinity we see that all the three ions will not be present together in the water and hydroxide and bicarbonate cannot be present together because the hydroxide and bicarbonate combines to form carbonate again so if these two are present we will have carbonate instead of these two okay so for this reason we will not have all the three present together or we will not have actually hydroxide and bicarbonate present together in the water so what are the conditions present in the water that once you have determined the alkalinity the calculation is very very simple that is that this is the general formula for determining alkalinity which is expressed as calcium carbonate that is the volume of sulfuric acid consumed for neutralization into strength of sulfuric acid whatever is the concentration 0.1 molar 0.1 normality 0.2 normality etc if you take it in normality this is 50 which is nothing but the equivalent or weight of calcium carbonate because you are expressing the strength in normality we are using equivalent weight if you express the strength in molarity you should take it in terms of molecular weight which generally people don't do strength of sulfuric acid and 50 into 1000 because we want to determine the mg of alkalinity present in 1 liter of water so 1 liter is 1000 ml so this 1000 comes and volume of water sample whatever you take 20 ml 50 ml 100 ml etc so if we are going to determine phenolphthalein alkalinity so if water sample is y ml volume of xn sulfuric acid that is the molarity of uh, normality of sulfuric acid uh, if it is p ml 
then phenolphthalein alkalinity is P that is volume of sulfuric acid is P strength of sulfuric acid is N 50 into 1000 divided by Y that is the volume of water sample similarly methyl orange alkalinity this volume of sulfuric acid is going to be substituted with M that is the volume of sulfuric acid consumed at methyl orange endpoint this is how you determine the alkalinity now we are going to determine this is phenolphthalein and methyl orange alkalinity we have determined but if you want to determine identify the ions present in the water and how much of volume of sulfuric acid is consumed to neutralize that particular ion then we have five different cases that is depending on the p and m value the first case is p is equal to zero that is when i add phenolphthalein it's not it's not going to be pink in color it's going to be colorless so what does that mean but I still say alkalinity is present in the water it says that at phenolphthalein endpoint hydroxide and carbonate half of carbonate gets neutralized if P is equal to zero carb hydroxide and carbonate are not present so what is the only possibility that is only bicarbonate is present so whatever is the volume of sulfuric acid consumed after adding methyl orange indicator that is for the neutralization of only bicarbonate because both hydroxide and carbonate are absent only bicarbonate is present so the volume of sulfuric acid is mml that is the sulfuric acid at methyl orange endpoint we'll go to case 2 P is equal to M. We are adding phenolphthalein. It is pink in color. We are titrating. It becomes colorless. Then we are adding methyl orange. And here, instead of turning yellow, it is directly reddish orange. That is, we don't have alkalinity further. That is, at phenolphthalein endpoint itself, it has completely neutralized. Then P is equal to M. Then we look into what are the conditions. When P is equal to M, P indicates hydroxide and carbonate but M minus P that is after phenolphthalein endpoint if it consumes sulfuric acid I will have M by M minus P but here it is not consuming any sulfuric acid beyond phenolphthalein endpoint this tells that carbonate and bicarbonates are absent so what is the only possibility only hydroxide is present so this is how we determine and all the sulfuric acid consumed is only to neutralize the hydroxide ion so it is P and M because both P and M are same P is equal to M M L we'll go to case 3 P is equal to half of M this is slightly tricky is equal to half of M we'll take a value and understand that is in case P is 10 and M is 20 based on this equation P is equal to half of M. P is 10 ml and M is 20 ml. So if you assume that only carbonate is present, for half of carbonate it consumes 10 ml. For remaining half, definitely it should consume another 10 ml. We see that M is 20. That means only if carbonate is present, 10 ml is consumed at phenolphthalein endpoint. That is carbonate getting converted to bicarbonate. And that bicarbonate further neutralizing. Okay. So, M minus P is 10. M is P is 10 and M minus P is 10. So, definitely bicarbonate and hydroxide cannot be present. So, the only ion present will be carbonate because half is consumed at phenolphthalein endpoint and remaining half is after phenolphthalein endpoint that is M minus P. So the volume of sulfuric acid is only due to carbonate to neutralize the carbonate ion it is M or 2P that is it is M M is nothing but 2P 2 goes there 2P so it is M or 2P ml of sulfuric acid. Now case 4 here it's you should be careful P is greater than half of M. Already we have said if it is equal to half of M, only carbonate is present. If P is greater than half of M, already for half of M carbonate is present. If P is greater, def definitely hydroxide is also present along with carbonate. And we have already said all the three cannot be present together. So only hydroxide and carbonates are present.
and we should determine how much sulfuric acid is required to determine carb uh, neutralize carbonate and how much to neutralize hydroxide how we'll do this here you should look at this equation and you should see which is the lower value because this indicates as m minus p is beyond phenolphthalein endpoint okay p is greater than half of m means this is greater than the sulfuric acid consumed after phenolphthalein endpoint okay so the minimum sulfuric acid that is when i compare these two the sulfuric acid which is consumed after phenolphthalein endpoint is less so we'll allot that for carbonate that is half of carbonate so if it is half of carbonate m minus p is going to neutralize half of carbonate i want how much it neutralizes for full carbonate so for full carbonate it is 2 m minus p are you able to understand we have already eliminated bicarbonate so m minus p is nothing but neutralization of half of carbonate but i want the volume of sulfuric acid for neutralization of full carbonate then for full carbonate it is 2 m minus p 2 m minus p once i understand 2 m minus p i know that methyl orange end point neutralizes all the three so i can easily determine how much is the volume of sulfuric acid required to neutralize oh that is m minus the carbonate that is sulfuric acid required for neutralization of carbonate that is 2 m minus p m minus 2 m i remove the bra brackets plus 2 p so i get 2 p minus n this is how i determine the volume of sulfuric acid required to neutralize hydroxide ion so i know carbonate and hydroxide the final case is p is less than half of m now this is less than half of m that is half of m we have already said it's only half of carbonate so when this is less it indicates this is more when this is more it tells apart from carbonate bicarbonate is also present because all the three cannot be present the choice is carbonate and bicarbonate now we should determine how much for carbonate and how much for bicarbonate that is sulfuric acid now again we'll go here which is the lower value p or half of m the lower value is p so here p hydroxide is ruled out at phenolphthalein end point only half of carbonate is getting neutralized so what is full carbonate 2p are you able to understand no hydroxide only half of carbonate is getting neutralized so for full carbonate it is 2p so this volume of sulfuric acid to neutralize carbonate is 2p or 2p is nothing but m okay sorry it's wrong it's only 2p don't take it as m it's wrong Uh, avoid the zm it is 2 pm now we'll go to amount of uh, sulfuric acid required to neutralize bicarbonate ion so m is the overall neutralization of all the ions so m minus 2p give me gives me the volume of sulfuric acid required to neutralize bicarbonate okay these are the five cases and we are summarizing that is ions present volume of sulfuric acid required to neutralize a particular thing and conditions all the five conditions what we have seen p is equal to 0 m is equal to m and all these five conditions and in this chart you can very easily determine the volume of sulfuric acid required for neutralizing a particular ion present in the water so for one small example we'll take this is the alkalinity uh, formula and we'll take an example that is if they give a problem and you have identified what is p and what is m first you should identify how much is phenolphthalein end point and how much is methyl orange end point then you calculate half of m this is 26 so half of m is 13 ml have these three values in mind p is 15 m is 26 half of m is 13 we'll go back to the chart that is p is 15 so it is not zero this condition is ruled out p is equal to m p was 15 and m was 26 these two are not equal so this condition is ruled out half of m was 13 p is 15 p 15 is not equal to 13 so this condition is also ruled out p is 15 and half of m is 13 so 15 is greater than 13 so our water sample is this condition 
so we need not go to this condition already we have decided this condition so we have hydroxide and carbonate bicarbonate completely absent so how much sulfuric acid is required to neutralize hydroxide 2p minus m and the volume of sulfuric acid required to determine carbonate is 2 m minus p now we'll go back so the hydroxide alkalinity we are going to calculate 2p minus m this is volume of sulfuric acid are you able to see volume of sulfuric acid now we'll put it as 2p minus m and all the other things remain same here I am taking the volume of water sample as 20 so I substitute it 20 if it is 50 it will be 50 if it's 100 it will be 100 similarly for carbonate alkalinity we'll see that is 2 m minus p carbonate is 2 m minus p so I'll substitute volume of sulfuric acid as 2 of m minus p and I'll calculate the carbonate alkalinity and you should put the e units as ppm or mg per liter this is how any uh, problem given to you look at the p value m value calculate half of m and go to your chart and see which condition satisfy and accordingly substitute that uh, formula that is volume of sulfuric acid ha alone has to be substituted all the other things will be the same and you can identify the ions present in the water sample which contributes for alkalinity and you can also individually calculate how much of sulfuric acid is required to neutralize a particular ion this is all for the session thank you for listening if you like the video please tap the like button please do drop your comments and don't forget to subscribe for more informative videos. Thank you. Let us meet again in another session. Until then, bye-bye.